Okay, the verdict is in in the Travis Rudolph trial. Let's get you into the courtroom and see what the jury has decided. In the circuit court of the 15th Judicial Circuit Criminal Division in and for Palm Beach County, Florida, case number 21 CF 002938 AMB Division W, State of Florida versus Travis Rudolph. Defendant, verdict. We, the jury, find as follows. As to count one, we find the defendant not guilty. As to count two, we find the defendant not guilty. As to count three, we find the defendant not guilty. As to count four, we find the defendant not guilty. So say we all, the seventh day of June, 2023, in West Palm Beach, Palm Beach County, Florida. Would either side like to have... Sorry. Would either side like to have the jury polled? No, no, no. All right, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, um, <clears throat> I, on behalf of everyone who is a participant in this trial, would like to thank you for your time and your consideration. I also wish to advise you of the special privileges enjoyed by jurors. In the absence of a court order, no juror can be required to talk about the discussion that occurred in the jury room. Our judicial system relies on juries for consideration of difficult cases. We recognize that a jury's deliberations, discussions, and votes should remain their private affair so long as they wish it. Therefore, the law gives you a unique privilege not to speak about the jury's work. The lawyers and their representatives are not permitted to initiate any communication with you about the trial. However, you may speak to the lawyers or anyone else about the trial if you wish. In the absence of a court order, you have the right to refuse to speak with anyone. A request may come from those who are simply curious or from those who might seek to find fault with you. It will be up to you to decide whether to preserve your privacy as a juror. I will add that I know that there has been a great deal of publication about this case. Um, you may need to keep that in mind. It's very possible you will be conduct, uh, contacted by individuals. So keep those uh, rights in mind that I just read to you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm also now going to pass out to you uh, letters um, uh, identical to those which I give, uh, I've given your colleagues, the uh, two alternate jurors whom I uh, excused earlier in the, uh, in the afternoon, or I guess it was morning. Um, I would encourage you, please, to take the time. It won't take you more than a minute or two to, well, maybe three minutes uh, to fill out those questionnaires. I do, as I said before, I do take them very seriously. I look at them. I have made changes in the way in which I conduct jury trials and the manner in which I handle juries and jurors uh, based on those uh, responses to those questionnaires over time. So please take the time to fill those out and then throw them in the envelopes that have been pre-addressed and postage paid for you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, once again. I know it's been a long time, a long process, and I thank you very much for your time, consideration, and work. You are relieved. Wow, not guilty on all charges. Travis Rudolph, you saw, he was wiping away tears. Uh, as the jury's being uh, let out of the courtroom. Uh, he is as hard as racing, undoubtedly, as he looks at these people as they leave, and um, he's soaking it all in. Heard some reaction on one side of the courtroom, negative, uh, and then you can see Travis's family behind him. His mother testified in this case. She's in the gallery there, uh, along with his brother, who also right, testified in the case. Let's go back in. Um, it seems to me there are a couple of things we need to address, but I may be mistaken about that. So I'm going to, I'll turn first to Mr. Shiner. Is there anything I need to address so far as your uh, client is concerned? Uh, well, I think the court just needs to, I think the verdict was announced, so I think the court just needs to make sure the court uh, documents it Okay, well, that will be done. You will, of course, uh, yeah. All right, that's already done, as a matter of fact. My client's also on house arrest. That's what I was thinking about. Let me talk to the state about that. Yes, yeah, Judge, at this time, he will be released from house arrest. Right. Based on the, the verdict. Okay. So he is not in, um, he is not uh, physically in custody of the, of, uh, the sheriff's department. That would be a different procedure. Now that he is on in-house arrest, um, do you know how um, uh, he is uh, taken off the monitor? Judge, he will just need to contact whoever he's been reporting to. 
Okay. Judge, I'm sorry, go ahead. Can you just contact whoever he's reporting to, whoever he's set up the in-house arrest with, um, and they would, either him or Mr. Shiner, to have the ankle uh, bracelet removed. And Judge, I've had in the past where the situation happened and the judges have ordered the deputies in the courtroom to cut it off. I will not do that. All right, but I will uh, authorize you immediately. Get on your cell phone right now if you want and contact whomever it is that's responsible for that and uh, tell them that I have ordered that his uh, monitor be removed. Yes, sir. All right, anything else? No, I'm From either side? Judge, I'm going to file a motion, but it's not appropriate to do it now to return property. Um, but I'll file that motion. All right. Forthwith. Very well. Judge, is Anything all else? Is all the evidence to be returned to the parties? No. Okay. Um, the uh, evidence is going to be uh, taken, uh, kept by the uh, clerk's office until such time as a motion is filed, particularly with respect to firearms. All right? Okay. All right. Thank you. Anything else? No, you're not. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Stay calm, everyone. Stay calm. And more importantly, stay safe. <clears throat>
But when she spoke five seconds later, when she got to count four, and he, they acquitted him of the, of the first three, and then she acquitted him of the last one, in his mind, I'm going home today with my family in Florida with palm trees. I'm going to go out to eat. And this is all behind me. I'm protected by double jeopardy. You see the smile on his face. So um, this is a big moment for all of them. Uh, I think justice was done properly. Um, and as an observer, you just you, you tip your hat to, to the defense. And, and to your point earlier, it's, it's difficult to take the stand if you're not telling the truth. But he, his conviction on that stand seemed effortless because in, uh, he was recounting a story from his perspective that absolutely had that righteous truth behind it in his mind. And, and he delivered it in that fashion. Uh, despite the stakes, he got up and convinced this jury of 12 um, of the, the, that he he would do it all again. To me, that was the biggest one. At the end of the day, the last question, if you could do it again, would you? Even though he took a life, um, he answered yes, because he felt that his life and his brother's life and even his mother's um, were in danger at that moment. Uh, what a performance it was for him. And, and uh, you, you mentioned it earlier, the perfect client to have because yeah. that conviction is it, right? You can't, you can't lie on the stand, it just doesn't work. Yeah. Ted, not only do I agree with you, not only are you 100% correct in what you just said, but here's what I want people to understand. If there's a video or any evidence that shows that you shoot somebody while they retreat, we are taught in law school. This is not in the first year of law school. This is in the first semester, right? In the first semester of law school, they teach you about the retreat rule, right? So the minute somebody, if somebody runs up to you with a gun and they point it at you and, if, and they shoot it at you, right and then they start running away and you grab your rifle and you shoot them as they're running away you've committed murder right that's if they shoot that's if they they're shooting you and they run away right in this case these people were not shooting at him they were running away they were they were in their car they were leaving there was a metal barrier between him and them and he still shot them and killed them so had he not testified this man was getting convicted of the top charge he was getting convicted, no questions. It was only his testimony and his sincerity in his testimony that has led to his acquittal. It, it was extreme. It was a black letter like divide between getting acquitted and not acquitted. This was the dramatic moment. Him testifying, he got himself acquitted and he's gonna relive this for the rest of his life. He's gonna have nightmares about that being on that stand, because we see him, the camera's fixated on him, we see a wall behind him, but that's not what he sees. He sees cameras, he sees his attorney, he sees the menacing prosecutor ready to savage him on cross-examination, because he was testifying in his own defense, so he, his attorney came first. He, he knew that the prosecutor was gonna come up and get under his skin. He was seeing the family of the, of the, of the victims, he was seeing his family, he was seeing cameras, right? And he did it, and he withstood it. He, he, and he and he he did a spectacular job. He saved his own uh, his own life. It was extreme. What a what an afternoon. Travis Rudolph not guilty on all charges. He is a free man tonight, and um, he is going home, and he will be home with his family.